nothing there. So what we'll do? How about we try comparing the graph of y equals cos x and the graph of y equals x squared plus one? Yeah, because as you know, well, I'm going to remind you. Okay, the graph of y equals cos x looks like this, doesn't it? Okay. And what's the name of that curve? It is called a catenary. Yeah, it passes through zero one, doesn't it? That's cos x. What about the parabola? Y equals x squared. That's a awful, awful, awful parabola. But never mind. What's the difference between them? Hmm. If you were to put one graph on top of the other on the same axis, well, they look. Do not use Desmos. Do not use a graphing function. Only when this is end. Only when this is end. That makes no sense. Only when this is at an end. Yeah. Can we do that? All right. So let's just see how this is going to go. I've not planned this, so this is going to be like looking at it from. Here's an interesting problem. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? Hmm. Tricky, isn't it? Tricky. Are they the same curve? No, of course not. Of course not the same curve. Okay. So let's just draw one of them. Doesn't matter which one, and because I'm going to do it a bit more. Yeah. Take the time. Let's get it slightly better. So one of them could look like that. Yeah. Yeah. The other one. I've also got a y intercept of 1, which is why I chose y because x squared plus 1. Then what happens? Well, there's a number of possibilities, aren't there? Okay, It could be that the next graph looks like this. Maybe. Maybe. It could be that that was the first graph and the second graph looks like that. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Did the graphs intersect any other times? Because if they did, they'd have something like this going on, wouldn't you? Maybe something like that. Either way around. Or maybe something like this. So you see, it's possibilities are more than one, aren't they? Okay. And that's why it's not a tricky one. Okay. Sure, as a sketch on its own, it's easy. They look very, very similar and actually are very, very similar, okay? Um, but let's just see how it is. So how do we do this, okay? How do we do this? First of all, you may be thinking, well, let's just see if there's an intersection point apart from zero, one, okay? So what we want to do is solve this. Cosh x is equal to x squared plus one. Hmm. Is into exponential form, shall we? e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2. I usually write this half, but I haven't today. What the hell is that? e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2 is equal to x squared plus 1. Mm. You can see by my face, this is not going to be easy, is it? e to the negative x is equal to 2, x squared plus 2. How do we solve that? No matter how hard you try, it's not going to be an easy one to solve. Some sort of numerical methods would be needed, isn't it? Okay. Uh, now, which numerical methods are you being used to? Uh, well, let's just take the top one because it's just easier. Cosh x, subtract x squared, subtract 1 equals 0. Well, clearly, um, if I write this as f of x equals that, f of 0 um, is equal to 1, subtract 0, subtract 1, which equals 0, great. Yeah, we know that, and x is 0, of course. But other values, this is where I'll go for trial and error. Yeah. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to try and f of 1, okay, is equal to, oh, I'll flip it out, I've got to get a silly function thing working out, option. No, yeah, hyperbolic function, yeah, cosh, uh, cosh of 1 equals 1.54, okay, subtract 1, subtract 1, 
Yeah, that's negative. Okay, so less than zero. See what I'm doing here? F of two, what's that? So cosh two, hyperbolic function, cosh two, equals like subtract four, subtract one, so subtract five, still negative. F of three, um, cosh, it's very fiddly. There are other numerical methods available to us, okay, because there's all sorts of things you can do for approximations, but what we want, simple trial now, trial and prove it will do. So f of 3, cos 3, what's that equal to? That's interesting. Subtract 9, subtract 1, so subtract 10. Positive. Which means, due to change in sign, there's got to be a root in between there and there. That was actually very close to zero. That was 0 0.067. So let me just try something that's very close to that. Let's try 2.9. Just get a bit closer. So cosh of 2.9. And then subtract 2.9 squared. And then subtract 1. It's negative. So it's in between there and there, isn't it? So it's somewhere between 2.9 and 3. I think it's close enough for a graph sketch, don't you? I think it's close enough, okay? So what that means is, um, tell you what, let's make a note of it here, shall we? So intercept at um, 0, 0, 2.9. Is it closer to 2.9 or closer to 3? Um, that, that, I'm, I'm going to have to say it's closer to 3. So I know it's not exactly three, it's just under, probably 2.99 something, but I'm just going to put approximately three, it's easier. Isn't it easier to do with three rather than 2.99? I'm glad you agree, yeah, I think it is. Because I want to kind of work out a y coordinate and all, don't I? Um, so, all right, so the y coordinate is going to be about 10, yeah? It's just, I mean, you can check that if you want. So cosh of um, three is equal to 10.06, you see? So when you've got the two graphs, y equals cosh x, y equals x squared plus 1. Obviously, 3 squared plus 1 is 10, okay? Um, but cosh of 3 is about 10. So approximately 3, 10. All right, that's that. Okay. Um, I'm going to predict that there's one more. Pause the video. Why do I predict that? Symmetry of the graph, isn't it? Yeah, symmetry of the graph. They're both symmetrical about the y-axis. Yeah, so what we've got is, if I just quickly put a sketch, um, I only need this and I. If we've got one graph is like that, okay? If the other graph, um, if there's one intersection point, let's just say it's there, okay? Because of the symmetry of the curve, there's going to be another intersection point there, isn't there? Yeah, so what I can do is just say that there's another intersection point at negative 3, 10. So three intersection points, okay? I reckon that's it. I don't think there are any more. I don't think there are any more. Okay. Uh, and I'll explain my reasoning a little bit later. Maybe, maybe you think about why I don't think there are any more. Okay. But that's that's it. Okay. Um, what should we do next? Yeah. Well, we want to kind of find out which graph is underneath each other, don't we? Yeah. We want to find out which graph is underneath each other. Okay. So, substitution values, maybe? Could be simple, wouldn't it? Okay. Why don't I just get rid of this from the board because I don't need that anymore? Um, yeah. So maybe for um, cosh x and x squared plus 1, we just substitute some values. So we know that at um, x is 0. We've got 1 and 1. Let's just put in some value between 3. Okay. 2 will do. I think so. 2 will do. I've rubbed out my working for 2. Stupid. Never mind. Uh, 2 plus 4 plus 1 is 5. Okay. And cosh of 2. Uh, it's handy to work it out again, I suppose, isn't it? So cosh of 2. 3.76. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? 
2.76. So, I think we can pretty much do it now. Okay. It's less time consuming than I thought, actually. Yeah. So, I'll just draw one of them. That's my reasonably good graph. Um, which one do I want that to be? Okay. I want that to be... Um, doesn't really make a difference, does it, really? Uh, but I kind of want it to be... Uh, I don't care, to be honest. Y because x squared plus 1. All right. And on the other graph, let's just have a 0. That is 3. That is negative 3. We know they intersect there and there. Yeah, and they intersect there as well, of course. But then for 2, okay. the parabola, that is 5. The catenary, they're lovely names, aren't they? Isn't it nice to be able to call graphs proper names? They're like parabola and catenary. Um, so I lost the third of what I said there. I got caught up in the beauty of the names. Um, okay, yeah. So the parabola, third, so 2, 5 there. The catenary, 2 there. So it means, doesn't it, that the catenary is flatter. It does this. Like that. And then it'll just do this. There we go. There we go. Why do I reckon there's no more intercepts? Okay. Well, quite well, no. So it's unfair. I was about to say quite simply, but none of this is simple, is it? Let's face it. God. This is simple. It would be on the standard maths course, wouldn't it? Not even that, it would be on the GC course if it was simple. Okay, it's not. Um, the graph y equals x squared plus 1, that increases um, at a rate such that as x increases, y increases at a faster rate. But it's a squared rate of increase, isn't it? Yeah. Cosh x okay, is e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. Okay. Um, what happens as x increases? x tends towards infinity. Okay. This term here, that will tend towards infinity as well, won't it? Okay. But at a much faster rate, that will tend towards zero. Okay, so we just ignore that. If you get half of, what's well, half infinity, really? It's infinity, isn't it? But e to the x, what you're looking at is you're comparing the graph of x squared plus 1 as, that ten, as x tends towards infinity. Okay. And the continuum is it, as that. You're comparing this as x tends towards infinity with this as x towards infinity. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And that one increases at a faster rate than that one. Because the power there is 2. The power is always going to be 2. The power there increases at a, at a bigger rate. It's like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You've got a number to the power of infinity. Okay, just think of it. Yeah. 100 squared is a lot smaller than... Two point something to the power of hundred. Okay, so that one increases greater. Okay, so what that means is you expect the catenary to very quickly become much steeper. Okay, hence the blue curve has become much steeper, and that will continue forever, and therefore it never cross again. Okay, oh, did it, and no calculus required. Isn't that quite nice? Anyway, that's yeah, um, that's just nice. Okay, and you may have posed the question. In fact, I probably posed the question, didn't I? When I introduced catenaries. You might have thought, what is the difference between a parabola and a catenary? Well, it doesn't really tell you the difference, but it shows you graphically that actually, yeah, there is a difference. Okay. Um, yeah. Anyway, I hope you got something out of that.